This ship is one of my favorite battleships in the game, alongside with the Abaddon and the Balgorn. The Apocalypse Tracker, or Paladin if we are going to name this ship according to the EVE Online naming, is one of the best ships that you can fly in this game, one of the best battleships overall. It has excellent use for a PvP, it has excellent use for PvE, it's one of the best PvE ships uh, that you can fly because it has very good clear times, you can easily get 120 million isk per hour uh, with a properly built Apocalypse Striker. Now let's go on to the bonuses. Advanced Large Laser Upgrade Bonus per level will give you plus 8% large laser damage, plus 7.5% large laser optimal range, plus 5% large laser tracking speed. Overall very comparable and very similar to um, the classic Apocalypse, which is also uh, one very good ship. And you get a advanced battleship command bonus per level which will give you plus 5% scan resolution. Which is good, uh, it means that you will be locking on targets a little bit faster than the rest of the ships. Overall, pretty good, pretty good bonuses so far. Now the ship has 2 drones, 8 high slots, 4 medium slots, 6 low slots, 3 combat and 3 engineering rigs. The ship has a decent cargo hold capacity, although it's nothing impressive. Primarily a armor tank, although if you are a sniper then I guess you can go a shield tank, but it's an apocalypse, armor tank is going to work well for it, or in my case I have basically no tank on my ship because I go for full DPS. The ship has excellent capacitors and you can also improve that number up to 45,000 I believe and that's a big capacitor. And this ship kinda needs uh, a big capacitor because you will be running out of capacitor very fast in siege mode with large lasers. The recharge rate is okay and of course the recharge time looks to be okay. It can lock 8 targets, signature radius 308 meters, scan resolution 125 meters, sensor strength 30.2, speed is 112 meters per second, this ship is not the fastest, uh, of course it's not the slowest, but uh, you don't expect the apocalypse to be very quick, it's overall a... I guess it's okay, uh, its velocity is quite okay, not the fastest, but not the slowest. Well then, let's go on to the build. Now. This build is uh, a sniper build with beam lasers and uh, I believe I'm using C-type beam lasers on this ship. I have, two, uh, I have actually several builds on this. Optimal range 104, accuracy fall of 26.74, tracking speed 4.22. Pretty good optimal range uh, with uh, both tracking computers inactive and overall it, ha it also has pretty good alpha damage. In siege mode uh, that will go up 100% because of the bonus. Now have a dual tracking computers that improve tracking and range. Excellent for sniping, excellent for uh, PvP and for PvE. Um, well, uh, I have one, one heatsink and one magnetic. Let's just change that. All right, you haven't you haven't seen anything. All right, now now it's good. Oh, okay, the dual heat sinks. I was wondering why my DPS was was a little bit off. I used the wrong the wrong module. Well then, 1.7 thousand cold, 2. Uh, 2.6 2.0 thousand uh, DPS with 2000 DPS with the pulse lasers. Range 54. 0.45, accuracy fall of 8.36, tracking speed 10.67, which is good. Now the thing with pulse lasers on this ship is they can track almost anything, even if the target is very close to you, including frigates. If you get tackled by an Ortus, for example, you are going to kill the Ortus with this ship. I have tested that out with one of my friends, and yes, uh, the Apocalypse Striker is a very hard to tackle ship if you are flying an or uh, if you're flying an Ortus because it has range, it has tracking and it has scary, scary DPS. With three heat sinks the DPS goes up to 2.1 thousand which is again uh, still very good. <laughs> Let me just triple track that 
in case I slapped another magnetic by accident. And of course, one track computer is there just in case. Although my PvP prophecy, my PvP apocalypse has uh, quad quad heat sinks uh, because, well, why not? It works. It works very well, actually. 49.27 km uh, is the maximum range, 7.61 is the falloff, and 9.52 is the tracking speed. Well then, uh, let's take a look at the speed and the overall uh, DPS in Siege mode on the Apocalypse Striker. Now it's not slow at all, uh, 1000 meters per second, 1002.99 to be accurate. 2.1000 cold DPS, it, which is pretty good. In Siege mode, that should go up to 3.1, almost 3.2000 DPS, which is very good. That's scary DPS right there. Without all the heat sinks active, let's see. The alpha damage also uh, goes up quite a bit. Now, you are doing more uh, EM damage than thermal damage, so that is to be expected on lasers. It's still pretty good. Now let's take a look at the first heatsink. 4037.4 DPS with dual heatsinks, it's 4.9 thousand, not bad. And with three heatsinks, it is 5.5 thousand, not bad at all, that's actually pretty good. Very similar to the previous strikers that I did fly. And of course, with the tracking computer active, 73 uh, km range, that's some pretty scary alpha damage as well, 11.5 accuracy falloff, 0.67 tracking speed. Well, uh, technically you should be able to hit a approaching Ortus with that range, and of course with that tracking. If they're moving around, then probably will miss, but if they are going straight to you, then you are going to be able to hit them and most likely one shot an Ortus because yeah that alpha damage is basically enough to do some serious damage on a cruiser. Now these are the beam lasers in siege mode 2.6 2664 DPS which is still pretty good for beam lasers. Now let's turn on one heatsink 3.3 thousand, almost 3.4 thousand DPS, pretty good. With the second heatsink, almost 4.1 thousand DPS, which is still excellent. And with three heatsinks, 4.6 thousand, which is good. More than enough, uh, more than enough DPS than you need. And of course, you can apply that damage from over 100 kilometers. Alpha damage is still pretty good. 139 km range, accuracy fall of 35.35, 0 0.25 is the tracking speed, which is still very good. A little bit less tracking on the beam lasers, but you get a little bit more range, which is, I think, a good trade-off between the, between the modules. Alright, now if you want to make the ship a little bit more tanky, then you can do something like this, although um, all of my main Apocalypse Striker builds don't involve any tank. Most of my Apocalypse Striker builds have pure DPS or range or both combined. Because after all, this is a Striker and they are mainly they are mainly DPS ships. You should be taking advantage of that crazy DPS and range that they can offer. You can also slap a afterburner if you want to save the capacitor, which is a good good idea and a good thing. 16 minutes uh, capacitor runtime with the afterburner on this ship. Well then, uh, let's take the Apocalypse Striker out for a spin and well, see how it performs. Although um, you could probably already see this ship blow up a lot of ships in the in the chunk fleet. This ship is one of the main ships in the trunk fleet. We have a lot of the we have a lot of these ships lurking around. They're actually not that expensive and overall offer fantastic performance. Basically, 
you get DPS, that is outperforming faction battleships, at five times less ISK. It's five times cheaper than an average faction battleship. Now, surprisingly, this thing can actually snipe frigates uh, in siege mode. Now, keep in mind, my skills are still not the best for our battleships, still working on that, so... And of course, I don't have a nanocore at the moment. Working on nanocores on the Balgorn and the Ortus, so... The ship has to wait a little bit until it gets a nanocore. But with the best possible skills, I believe in siege mode you should be able to nail down frigates at this range. That is something that the Tempest Striker had problems with. It is something that uh, the Raven Striker was unable to do. And of course it's something that the Megatron Striker had problems with. But this ship doesn't, doesn't suffer from these problems. 189 kilometers with dual track computers, 47 optimal, 47 fall off. Well, that's actually, that's actually terrifying. No wonder that uh, I avoid tackling these ships with an Ortus. I mean, it's not impossible. It's definitely possible, but you really have to be lucky to land close to the close to the ship. If they have beam lasers, then you have a chance to shoot it down with the Ortus. If they have pulse lasers, just run, because an Ortus will not survive being shot by this thing. And I can say that for basically any other ship that is lurking around. That's why this ship is also highly recommended for, for PvE. Now I use Makariel for, for PvE missions, because this ship is usually uh, usually in the null sack system waiting to be used for PvP, while my Makariel is being the PvE ship, but this ship is actually clearing missions faster than my Makariel. And I have, measure, and I have measured uh, how much faster, it's actually twice as fast. Which is very surprising. My cold DPS on the Makariel is around 3.1 thousand DPS, on this ship is around 3.5 thousand, so... So it's obviously faster, and of course uh, I don't have to worry about the tank on this ship, because it just snipes anything. While the Makariel is uh, close range, I don't use the Makariel as a sniper, so um, I can't really uh, go full DPS on, on that ship, but uh, in any case, it's surprising how effective this ship is for PvE. No wonder that uh, people love the Apocalypse Tiger so much, and I love it too, although I don't use it for PvP, I don't use it for PvE, I use it for PvP mainly. Well then, uh, also one surprising thing, I'm getting pretty good alpha damage. I didn't get this good of alpha damage out of the Tempest Striker. The Apocalypse Striker just has more st more stable alpha damage for some reason. Although uh, the Tempest Striker does have superior range, this ship is overall more stable and overall uh, I'd say more fun to fly in a way. But that's maybe uh, just me. I had fun with the Tempest Striker as well. That thing can snipe from 400 plus kilometers with perfect skills. With perfect skills you can get over a 500 kilometer range, I'm pretty sure of that. Although uh, this ship is a little bit more faster for PvE. Yep, it can basically shoot down frigates at this range in siege mode, very surprising. I couldn't do that in the Tempest. I could shoot down destroyers, but I wasn't able to properly hit frigates. This ship seems to be... yep, <laughs> as you can see it just... It just nails frigates from this range. Now sometimes I do miss in siege mode, but for the most, for the most time I do hit a frigate in siege mode. 
with the tracking computers and I have only two of them I could have I could have used three with three it would be almost 100% uh, hit chance on uh, on all three as that I'm shooting here although it hits destroyers cruisers and everything else uh, without a problem and I have to say I'm clearing this mission very quickly now like I mentioned before, around 120 to 150 million isk per hour with this ship. If you have perfect skills, uh, it's maybe even more than that, because you would be using the siege mode only at long range. You would not be worried about small ships getting close. And speaking about small ships, even if they do get close, you still can hit them, so it's not a big problem. This ship has enough tracking to hit uh, to hit ships that are orbiting close by or that are fast. And that's something that I have learned uh, while flying my Ortus. I've noticed that from all turret ships, Apocalypse and Apocalypse Striker are the only ones that that are a big threat to, um, uh, to an Ortus because they have the best tracking and of course overall the highest alpha and the highest DPS which is a good thing and a bad thing a good thing you can shoot on an Ortus bad thing I might be having trouble <laughs> but it's fine the Ortus did serve very well in the last seven or eight months all right well that was a quick mission uh, it took me like a couple minutes to clear the the encounter well then, uh, let's go and clear the next one. Let's try to shoot down that frigate. I missed. Okay, fair enough. Looks like a third, yeah, a third tracking computer would be a good idea if you want to use the ship as a sniper. Although, dual heat sinks are very attractive to use because of the DPS that you can get out of this ship but in some cases having good accuracy is better than having raw DPS especially for PvP I haven't tried this ship in PvP as a sniper most of my uh, fights that I've had with this ship were with pulse lasers and I did melt quite a bit of ships with the, with the apocalypse the last, the last fight was actually very fun. We smashed the gate with the with the ship. We smashed a um, gate camp. They did not see four apocalypse strikers warping in. Oh man! Uh, four of these ships can have twenty thousand DPS combined in siege mode for forty-five seconds. That tells you something. That's quite scary. A Megaton Striker with perfect skills is around 10,000 DPS, so the only ship that has more DPS from the Striker lineup is the Megaton Striker, although uh, that ship has problems with range. It has only 15 km range with the large blasters, while this ship can have very good DPS at 100 km, which makes it perfect for anything and surprisingly I find beam lasers in a lot of cases better than pulse lasers although I personally like pulse lasers because most of my fights are up to 45 kilometers it doesn't go above that with uh, with this ship especially if I take this ship to smash a camp then the fights are usually even below 30 kilometers so in that case pulse lasers are perfect but uh, if I ever decide to use this ship as a sniper, then I will be using it with beam lasers. Not quite sure what fit will I use. Am I going to go with three heat sinks or three tracking computers? That's something that I still have to decide. I believe a perfect balance is dual heat sinks and dual tracking computers. It should do the job just fine. Now of course I have also to um, I can also improve the skills a little bit, but I'm preparing for a, I'm preparing uh, for a big big ship, so I have to um, save the skill points for for different skills at the moment. I and I personally 
can't wait to start flying that big new ship. Oh man, that's gonna be fun. It's lurking around in a hangar at the moment, but very soon that will be that will be rolled out. And oh man, it will be fun. I can guarantee you that much. It will be fun. Uh, I think a couple of you already know what I mean, but uh, let's let's keep that ship for um you know for a surprise. I'm um, I'm not going to spoil much. I'm preparing for it slowly, and it will be. It will be a heck of a surprise, I believe. It should be. Now back to the apocalypse. You can also time the track computers to get an average 120, 130 km range. It's good if you want to shoot down frigates or or any anything that is uh, fast, like a cruiser or a frigate. So far, so far, I don't know, if this ship ever ends up being, uh, well, better to fly than the, than the Macario, then I believe the Macario will be sold, or the Macario will be used for PvP, something, something will happen, that's for sure, because for the Concord missions, I like to clear missions as quickly as possible. And that is something that the Macarial is good at, but this ship just does it a little bit faster. With the Macarial I'm averaging around 60 to 100 million isk per hour. With this I'm averaging 100 to 120 million isk per hour on average. So yeah, uh, definitely a significant e improvement. However, um, the Macarial is very important for me. It's basically at this moment a relic of the um, old alliance and the old coalition that disbanded recently. So that Macarial has a has a good history behind it, and that's one of the reasons why I keep the ship alive. Well then, uh, that was fun. The Apocalypse Tiger is truly a very magnificent beast and overall a very nice, very nice ship to fly and it's also extremely fun. And well, um, I hope that this video could help decide what kind of build you want on this ship. Hope that you also enjoyed. And with that being said, stay safe, fly safe and I'll see you next time.